Greetings to all students and viewers. We are back again for another interesting lesson on cell division. In this video, we'll discuss mitosis, a type of nuclear division. Now, many students regard this topic as one of the more challenging or difficult topics in the biology syllabus. This may be due to the many biological terms that are new, that are used here, or the concepts involved. However, I believe that every student can learn and understand. If you study with the right systematic approach and learn the correct concepts, you will succeed in mastering this topic. Learn the right keywords, memorize the definitions, and try as many questions as you can on this topic, whether it be objective questions, structured or essay questions. So let's get started. This video lesson is suitable for Form 4 students who are studying the new KSSM syllabus this year and in the coming years. So it's about Chapter 6, Cell Division. The subtopic is 6.2, Cell Cycle and Mitosis. However, it can also be used by Form 5 students for this year, for 2020, who are studying the old KBSM syllabus. So it involves chapter 5 in your form 4 syllabus and the chapter is on cell division which you have studied last year. The subtopic is 5.1 mitosis. So this video will help you in your re revision as most of you are going to be tested on chapter 5 in the coming term exams and of course in SPM 2. This video is the first of a series of three videos. So in this video, which is mitosis part one, we will discuss what, where and why mitosis occurs. So it's the introduction. Okay. What is mitosis? Where does it occur? Why is it important? In the next video, mitosis part two, we will discuss the process of mitosis that is the how. How does it occur? And lastly, in video 3, we will discuss exercises and try some exercises in order to apply the knowledge that we have learned to reinforce our learning and our memory and also to get used and to answer the questions in the best way for success in the exams. So let's look at the learning outcomes. After this video lesson, you should be able to state the definition of mitosis. This is the what. Eh? What, is the, what is mitosis? So please memorize the definition. Okay. So number two, state where mitosis occurs in plants and animals. So this concerns the where, the location of mitosis in the body of animals and plants. Number three, explain the necessity, function or role of mitosis. This is the why. Why is mitosis uh, important? Why must organisms carry out mitosis? And fourthly, explain the significance of mitosis in maintaining the diploid number of chromosomes in an organism. Okay, so this is also related to the why or what is the significance of mitosis or the importance of mitosis. First of all, let's discuss what is mitosis. So here's the definition for mitosis that we need to memorize. And memorize it word for word. Don't try to write the definition in your own words because maybe some points may be left out. Now mitosis is the division of the nucleus of a parent cell into two nuclei of two daughter cells found in each nuclei is found in each daughter cell okay so mitosis is the division of the nucleus and after that if uh, the division of the cytoplasm will occur which is cytokinesis so these two are separate uh, events huh? division of the nucleus is mitosis and division of cytoplasm is cytokinesis so number two each new nucleus produced through mitosis contains the same number of chromosomes 
and the same genetic content as the nucleus of the parent cell. So it's like a photostat copy eh, within inverted commas. Like when we photostat our notes, the photostat copy looks exactly like the normal. Eh? So in this case for mitosis, daughter cells produced are 100% like the parent cells genetically. So we say that the two daughter cells formed are genetically identical to each other and to the parent cell. Okay, so let's look at this diagram. Uh, parent cell is always a diploid somatic cell. A diploid means what? So you look at the, the symbol here, 2N. Uh, this explains the diploid, the term diploid. 2N, the N stands for sets. Okay, so a diploid cell is a cell that contains two sets of chromosomes. One set is from the father, for example, that is passed down to the organism, to the child, uh, through the sperm. And one set of chromosomes is from the mother, passed down to the child in the ovum. In other words, a diploid cell has two copies of each type of chromosome. For example, in humans, we have two chromosome number one, two chromosome number two, two chromosome number three, and so forth. Uh, so chromosome 1, 2, 3 and so on, they carry different types of genes. But for each type, there are two copies, one from the father and one from the mother. So that's called the paternal chromosome and the maternal chromosome. Right, so diploid cell, remember there's two sets of chromosomes and there are two copies of each type of chromosome. Now somatic cells are normal body cells like the skin cells and the liver cells. So that's the parent cell, huh? it's a diploid somatic cell and it does not uh, involve any gametes. Okay, So this cell undergoes mitosis and produces two diploid so daughter cells that are also somatic. Okay, They're also normal body cells. And these two cells furthermore have the same genetic content as the parent cell. Okay, So the genetic content is maintained in the through the cell divisions huh, in the body of the organism. So here let's discuss the significance of mitosis in maintaining the diploid number of chromosomes for an organism. Now what is the diploid number of chromosomes, the 2n number of a species of organism? This is the number of chromosomes present in one diploid somatic cell of the species. For human beings, this number is 46. We have 46 chromosomes in each diploid somatic cell. Now this diploid number is constant, unique and does not change for each species. If a person has a number that's different, for example 47 chromosomes, this is an abnormal number of chromosomes, huh? 47 chromosomes per cell for each cell, then he may suffer some serious health problems. So the role of mitosis or the significance of mitosis is that in mitosis, a diploid parent cell always produces two diploid daughter cells that have the same number of chromosomes as it. Okay, If the mitosis process occurs normally, so mitosis helps to maintain the diploid number of chromosomes of an organism. And that is the importance or significance of mitosis. Okay, so a diploid parent cell for humans is where 2n equals to 46 produces daughter cells where 2n equals to 46 too. All right, and this must go on through all the numbers of all the times of cell divisions uh, in the organism's body. So all the cells in the organism's body produced by mitosis should all be genetically alike or identical. Here's some interesting information on the number of chromosomes in a diploid cell and also for haploid cell in the various species of organisms. Let's start with Homo sapiens and that's us. Homo sapiens is the scientific name for human beings. In each cell, 
of a human being, there are 46 chromosomes in the diploid cell, eh, for the diploid cell. And how many for the haploid cell? 46 divided by 2 equals to 23. Because diploid cell has two sets of chromosomes, whereas haploid cell has only one set. So these 23 chromosomes are all different chromosomes, huh? from chromosome number 1 to chromosome number 22, and the last one is a sex chromosome. Tell me examples of haploid cells in the human body. Give me examples. The sperm and the, the ovum okay, are haploid cells. The rest of the cells are uh, diploid. Huh? The, basically, the most of the cells are diploid, except for the sperm and ovum. Now, Xiamase or corn has 20 chromosomes in the diploid cell and 10 chromosomes in the haploid cell, correct? Felix domesticus, the cat, has 19 chromosomes in the haploid cell. So how many in the diploid cell? 19 times 2. Okay? So the number of chromosomes in the haploid cell, in the diploid cell, is 2 times that of the haploid cell. Drosophila melanogaster is the fruit fly. There's only 8 chromosomes in the diploid cell and 4 in the haploid cell. Caresses auritus, the goldfish, although it's very small, has 94 chromosomes in each diploid cell and 47 in the haploid cell. Galus galus, that's a nice name for the chicken, eh? has 78 chromosomes in its diploid cell and 39 in haploid cell. So here we see that every species of organism have their own, has their own unique uh, diploid number of chromosomes. Eh? So for human beings also, this diploid number of chromosomes must remain constant throughout the generations and also must remain constant in the organism's body, in, the, in a person's body during cell division uh, by mitosis. Next, let us find out where mitosis occurs. Where's the location of mitosis in animals and plants? In animals, it, is in the, it occurs in the diploid somatic cells in most parts of the body. For example, in the malpigian layer of the skin, in the liver, and the bone marrow, which helps to produce new red blood cells to replace the old red blood cells. Let's talk about the malpigian layer of the skin. So this layer is the wavy layer here, okay, a few layers down from the surface, and it is constantly dividing by mitosis to produce new cells to replace the dead cells at the top of the skin, which may have uh, been may have dropped off from the top layer. Okay, so we need this malpigian layer to always replenish and replace the cells that have died and that have dropped off. Now the liver, as we said now, the liver has been um, cut off in some way, it can regenerate or grow back its parts by uh, mitosis. Huh? And then the bone marrow. Bone marrow is uh, in, found in the center part of certain bones in the body and it can produce red blood cells. For example, if somebody were to cut through uh, the chicken drumstick, if it's broken, uh, for example, when you're eating uh, parts of the chicken and you see the drumstick is broken, you may see something reddish inside the center there. That is the bone marrow. In Malay, we call it sum sum tulang and in Chinese, it's called gu sui. Okay? So this bone marrow contains cells that can divide by mitosis to produce new red blood cells to replace the old red blood cells that may survive for about a few months. Huh? So after that, new red blood cells will take over and they come from the bone marrow. Now in plants, mitosis occurs in the meristematic tissues of shoot tips and root tips and it causes the growth of shoots and roots. Remember in chapter 2, we studied about meristematic tissues or meristem. So these tissues are found in the top part of the shoot and the tip of the roots, uh, all the roots, all the tips of the roots. So they are constantly undergoing mitosis to produce new cells so that the shoot, for example, can grow upwards towards the sunlight and the roots can grow further down into the soil to obtain water. So if we were to cut off the shoot, uh, the root tip, for example, huh, then the part of the root which has been cut off will not grow 
longer anymore because the meristem is found right at the tip uh, of the root if you cut off this shoot this part of the shoot will not grow anymore but side shoots may side buds may come up okay so in plants there are certain places where growth can occur and where mitosis is occurring uh, not in all parts of the plant not like animals uh, where mitosis occurs in many parts and apart from meristematic tissue in on in the shoot tip and root tip the cambium in the stem also can carry out uh, mitosis to cause the stem to increase in diameter to the production of new cells let us go on to explain the necessity of mitosis that is what are the roles or functions of mitosis in an organism okay so this is a popular question for the structured section huh? so mitosis is important for the following life processes a mitosis produces new cells to replace dead or damaged cells when the body is injured so you can see here that the role or function of mitosis is similar to the role or function of cell division huh? because cell division is also uh, also involves mitosis uh, as we have discussed earlier these are also the roles of cell division huh? so mitosis produces new cells to replace dead and damaged cells for example when the body is injured okay so uh, to replace dead cells for example we can take the example of the skin all right so skin cells can live for about two weeks after that they will die and they will just drop off from the surface of the skin therefore the skin has a layer of cells just beneath the surface called the malpigeon layer that can produce new cells by mitosis or through mitosis to replace the dead cells. Okay, And then to replace the damaged cells, for example, if a person has a cut on the hand, he has to allow his cells to carry out mitosis in order to produce new cells to replace the damaged cells and so that the wound can heal uh, the wound at the hand can heal okay so mitosis is needed to produce new cells to replace dead and damaged cells now b mitosis ensures a rapid increase in the number of cells firstly for embryo development and then after that when the organism is born it will help to increase the number of cells for organisms growth uh, so that the size of the organism can increase you know from embryo to fetus to child to adult as we can see here huh? or from seedling to a young plant to a tree so all the way along during this process of during the timer uh, mitosis must occur to increase the number of cells okay for growth so let's look at this picture here here we see a zygote so human life starts as starts out as a zygote when the fertilization between sperm and ovum occurs so this is a single diploid cell it undergoes mitosis and divides into two cells then two cells become four cells and so forth that forms a ball of cells called the embryo through mitosis and as mitosis continues on the fetus is formed after about three months huh? and then after nine months the baby is born and from baby stage till adult stage mitosis continues through the years to increase the size of the of the human being okay so mitosis is needed to produce new cells and increase the number of cells for growth continuing with the necessity of mitosis all right two more points mitosis helps organisms to grow new body parts through regeneration example if a lizard's tail breaks it can grow a new tail through regeneration so what is regeneration It's the regrowth of new body parts to replace the old body parts which may be lost or damaged okay growing again the new body parts take for example a lizard so when a lizard is lizard is a startled huh? when a lizard is startled or afraid it will drop its tail huh? it will just uh, break off uh, the tail and the tail will wriggle and then distract the the enemy so that the lizard can escape so in the process we have a tailless lizard what's the lizard going to do about that 
So the end of this tail will undergo mitosis. And in three months' time, the regeneration of the tail is complete. Get the lizard will get a brand new tail. Okay? All by mitosis. So mitosis is important for regeneration of body parts. Now for humans, what is the one organ that can undergo regeneration? It's the biggest organ inside the body. The liver. Uh, so if a liver is if part of a liver is uh, donated uh, to somebody who has liver problems, then the donor, the donor's liver can still grow back to regeneration because new cells will be produced by mitosis. New liver cells uh, will be produced by mitosis. Okay? Right. D, mitosis helps organisms such as hydra species to produce new individuals through the formation of new buds. This is a type of asexual reproduction. Now, what is hydra species? SP stands for species. Huh? So, hydra species is a small freshwater animal about 1 to 2 cm long and it can reproduce asexually, meaning through one single parent only. No need two hydra, male and female hydra. Huh? Just one single parent and uh, it can produce new offspring through mitosis. For example, if the hydra wants to uh, form a new offspring, which we call the new bud, eh? it will undergo mitosis in the section here and slowly new cells will be formed and then it will develop into a new bud or a new hydra that sticks onto the old hydra, to, sticks onto the parent hydra. Okay, So the offspring is genetically the same as the parent organism because it's produced through mitosis and through a single parent. Huh? So uh, asexual reproduction involves mitosis and also just one parent that undergoes mitosis to produce the new individuals. Let's continue to discuss the necessity of mitosis. In the previous discussion, we focus on the Necessity of mitosis for living processes like growth and replacement of the dead cells. But in this part, we are going to discuss the necessity or application of mitosis in agriculture and also in food production and finally in medicine. Okay, so we start with the application of mitosis in agriculture. How is mitosis used in the field of agriculture to produce young plants? So in agriculture, there's a technique called tissue culture, which is used to produce young plants through the process of mitosis. How is it done? By culturing the cells or growing the cells from a parent plant. We take the cells from a parent plant and we grow it in a culture medium. We give it the nutrients, we give the cells the nutrients and the growth hormones to stimulate growth and also optimum pH and temperature. So with that, the cells uh, will start to divide by mitosis and they will slowly develop to form a plantlet. So no fertilization is involved in this process. So this will help to avoid the process of fertilization and also produce the plants more easily and at a quicker rate. Let us look and uh, discuss more about tissue culture. Although this topic is not discussed in the notes, uh, in the textbook, but there's a question on it where you, you will have to explain the steps of tissue culture. Therefore, we have to know the steps of tissue culture and both Form 4 and Form 5 students, uh, Form 5 students for this year 2020, will also need to know about tissue culture and be able to explain it as an essay answer uh, for essay questions. Let us discuss the application of mitosis through the use of tissue culture. What is tissue culture? It is the growth of tissues outside the organism, outside the parent plant, in a sterile culture medium with nutrients and hormones to produce new plants that are genetically like the parent plant, genetically identical to the parent plant. Okay, so tissue culture is the growth of tissues outside the parent plant in a culture medium. 
So to begin with, first of all, let's say there is a plant that has high yield or high resistance to disease that needs to be produced in large numbers or propagated. So after identifying the plant that has good characteristics or traits, we cut off a part of the plant like the shoot tip or even the root tip. Okay, so cut it off, wash the shoot tip and sterilize it by washing in a solution of sodium hypochlorite or bleach to kill all the pathogens or the microorganisms so that they cannot attack the young tissues of the plant. Next, after extracting the shoot tip, which we call the explant, it contains cells that we want to propagate or we want to uh, allow them to undergo mitosis. So this explant is actually the extract from the parent plant. Huh? That's why you can remember that it's the explant. Huh? So put the explant in a culture medium that contains nutrients and growth hormones. And this culture medium must also be sterile or free from pathogens or microorganisms. Furthermore, the culture medium must have the optimum pH that's suitable for the plant and optimum temperature too. So, in the presence of the growth hormones and the nutrients, huh, the explant will undergo mitosis. The cells of the explant will undergo mitosis. They will divide by mitosis and form a callus. A callus is a mass of cells that are not differentiated. After some time, an embryo will be formed and as mitosis continues, differentiation also occurs. So the plant starts to be produced and uh, parts of the plant will differentiate uh, to form the leaf, the stem and the roots. Finally, a plantlet is formed. Plantlet is a young plant. And then, after some time, this plantlet is taken out and then transferred to the soil where it will grow. So this plantlet is considered a clone of the parent plant A, meaning that it is an offspring that is genetically identical to the parent plant in all aspects. It will also inherit the good traits such as high yield and a strong resistance to disease. So in this way, through tissue culture, a large number of plants can be produced in a short time. Now in relation to this topic on tissue culture, let's look at a question that can be asked in the exam. A researcher wants to produce large numbers of a fruit tree that has high yield and delicious fruits. For example, the durian tree uh, may have high yield and delicious fruits and somebody wants to produce large numbers of the tree. Explain the technique used. So the technique used is tissue culture because we want to clone this tree so that we get plants that also have high yield and delicious fruits. Uh, so we must produce the plants that are genetically identical to the parent plant, the fruit tree X. So the technique of tissue culture is used to clone plant X in large numbers. Tissue culture involves the growth of tissues in a sterile culture medium outside the organism's body to produce plants or clones that are genetically identical to the parent. Now all these notes here are exactly what we have discussed in the slide, uh, previous slide with the picture that I've explained to you. Okay, so here I've provided the notes for you to write down so that you can do well and score if the question should come out in the exam. Huh? So do go through the notes and it is an application of what we have studied concerning tissue culture Okay, in the form of a question. And this question is also a Solan Ramalan or a forecast question for exam. Okay, so it's a very good set of question and answer. Huh? It's a good set of question and answers. So let's go on further to this part. Huh? Now, all this has been discussed in the previous slide, so I'll just read through it. Huh? Should tip of parent X with good traits such as high yield and delicious fruits is cut off and sterilized in bleach or sodium hypochlorite, 
Explant is cultured in sterile culture medium with nutrients, growth hormones, and optimum pH and temperature. Cells of plant explana divide by mitosis to form callus. Callus develops into embryo and then planted. Planted planted in soil, they are clones of parent X, that is genetically identical to parent X. So other examples are given here. Let us finish up by discussing the application of mitosis in food production and medicine. For the Form 4 students under the KSSM syllabus, this topic is important and is included in the textbook and the syllabus. Okay? But for Form 5 students, this topic of application of mitosis in food production and medicine, the culturing technique, the stem cell therapy, is not included. Although, for Form 5 students under the KBSM syllabus, you will study about stem cell in the topic of inheritance, uh, Chapter 5, Inheritance. So, for Form 5 students, it's up to you whether you want to go through this one slide. Maybe it may be asked in the HOTS questions. We do not know. Okay? Okay, so Form 4 students have to know all this. Now, stem cell. So, a stem cell, uh, the stem cells are used in the application of mitosis in food production and medicine. Uh, so, you have to know what it is. A stem cell is a special type of undifferentiated cell in the body that can divide by mitosis and differentiate into different types of specialized cells, for example, muscle cell. So the stem cell is an undifferentiated cell, meaning that it has not uh, produced any uh, special structures or has not undergone any change in shape yet. It's just like a general cell, round cell huh, in the body. But it has uh, two abilities. Firstly, it can divide by mitosis. And secondly, it can differentiate. Some of the daughter cells can differentiate into different types of specialized cells like muscle cell, nerve cell, cartilage cell, red blood cell. Okay, so here we have a stem cell. It undergoes mitosis to produce two daughter cells. Some of the daughter cells, some of the daughter cells continue on to be the stem cells. Huh? But some of these daughter cells can differentiate and become muscle cell, nerve cell, or other types of cells. So, these other types of cells can be used for different purposes. Okay, so let's look at the two applications. The first is the culturing technique that uses stem cells from animals. And these animals are such as the chicken or whatever animal that you want to get meat from. Huh? So, these cells, stem cells, are cultured in a culture medium with nutrients in the laboratories to produce meat. Now, cultured here means grown. Eh? The cells are grown, given the nutrients so that they can grow and they, they can divide eh? and produce more cells in a culture medium with nutrients. So the culture medium gives all the favorable conditions for the growth of the cells. And it also includes maybe some uh, nutrients and at the optimum temperature eh? and pH. Okay, in the laboratory, Okay, all this is done in the laboratory to produce meat. So how does it produce meat? When you put the stem cells in the culture medium, it will undergo mitosis and divide and produce more cells. Some of these cells will differentiate to form muscle tissue. As we have said here, stem cells can differentiate to form muscle tissue. And that develops into meat. Meat is actually the muscle tissue of the animal, right? So this type of meat is uh, lab-grown meat. It's not directly taken from the animals and it's called cultured meat or lab-grown meat. And it's already been sold in certain uh, parts of the world and in the burgers, uh, for example. But it is quite expensive, so it has not yet been uh, sold commercially on a wide scale. Okay, So this can uh, prevent uh, or avoid uh, the killing of animals uh, for their meat if cultured meat can be produced on a large scale. Stem cell therapy is another application of mitosis, right? It uses stem cells from the bone marrow to produce cartilage tissue to treat damaged cartilage. For example, there are some people who have damaged cartilage at the knee joint. The cartilage has worn off due to constant wear and tear so the bone ends are exposed. Actually, the cartilage covers the bone ends uh, and they can reduce friction at the joint because they are smooth uh, and uh, they have this smooth characteristic. But when the cartilage wears off, 
then the bone ends are exposed and they will rub against each other at the joint during movement. So this causes a lot of pain. So now there are stem cells from the bone marrow eh, that can be uh, used to produce cartilage cells eh, and cartilage tissue in order to replace the damaged cartilage at the joints. Okay. Now, uh, bone marrow is the place where the stem cells are found because we remember, do you remember the bone marrow is used to produce the red blood cells? Huh? So, the stem cells can be found there, the cells that carry out mitosis. Stem cells can also be found in the skin, huh? which also carries out mitosis to produce the new skin cells. That is all for the first video on mitosis. In the next video, we'll be studying the process of mitosis. For example, we'll be discussing the process of mitosis in onion root tip and we'll be looking at the diagrams involving the four stages of mitosis. So thank you for watching and do share, like and subscribe. See you in the next video. Goodbye.